It is a good morning. Delayed, <laughs> but yet yeah, still a good morning. So I'm sitting here, puppy sitting. So you're probably going to hear Piper in the background. So just know that there's no way around it. Because if I walk outside of her sight, she's going to start yiping. And that'll be more scouts at obedience school. <clears throat> So I had a little difficulty getting this Twitter space started. I'm not sure what was going on. I had to turn the phone off a few times to, to get it to start. So here we are now. So I thank you for your patience. Today's discussion is when adversity becomes your objectives to overcome. That's a whole lot of word salad there. But basically, it's the process. We talk about trust the process. What process is that? A natural order of development, progress in learning, modularly, step by step, here, there, a little bit more here, and not being in a rush to get to what you think right now is the end result. Because you don't know what that is yet. You don't know what it is for you. You have a dream, you have a goal of what it is that's going to be defining you as a profitable, successful, consistently profitable trader. Over time, you're going to see that this morphs and changes, and the goals that you have right now are too low. When I first started, my goal was to make $1,000 a month and retire when I was 40 years old. And just recently, you, you, know, you watched with the live account, I was doing the equivalent of what would be 15 months in less than five minutes. Not demo. That's not the brag. It's not, I'm not here to do that. But I'm just saying that what you have in mind right now for yourself, it's too small. But that is not an enticement for you to speed up and rush through the process. Process of going through the motions of back testing, studying, doing lots of personal reflections. How often do you meditate on yourself and think about what it is that you've done? What do you think about? What does your mind gravitate to throughout the day? What's the last thoughts you have before you go to bed? What's the first thoughts you think of when you first wake up? Over time, you're going to start seeing those things change from worrisome, what if I fail? What if it takes longer than I thought it was going to take? What if I lose this next trade? What if I blow my account? What if I draw down more than I'm comfortable with? What then? All those types of thoughts, they're, ad they're adversarial. Thinking about the negative side and empowering it, giving it energy, constantly feeding it your attention and your concern makes it formidable. At some point in your progression and learning and development, there's going to be a paradigm shift that takes place. It's going to be unique and at a different stage in time for all of you. But at some point, by doing the things I'm telling you to do and avoiding the things I'm telling you to avoid, and the people that are toxic, you filter them out. The things that are not empowering to you, the things that invite the negative what if thinking. When you block all that stuff out and you look at the present concerns that you have for yourself, what are the adversities that you see within yourself? or down the road you know, near term. Some of you are thinking, I might not learn this by this specific time. I have this goal in time that I want to be able to trade a silver bullet setup consistently a few times a week. I want to be able to consistently five, find five handles rather in ES. 
at least one session per day. There's nothing inherently wrong with placing a, a time scheduled goal, but you have to be flexible in that. And some of you don't really write that into your trading plan or your study. You've made a, you made no allowance for it. It's finite. It's, it's definitely got to be this time. And what you've done is you've, you created an adversity that you will constantly refer back to every day. If you don't have a positive increase, you're going to feel like you're going to be overcome by that adversity. It's going to feel like it's a looming event on the horizon that's going to undo you, overtake you, prevent you from succeeding. And that feeds that what if thinking, that what if toxic thinking that, you know, what if I don't really amount to anything in trading? What if I've looked at all these different approaches to trading and even outside of my stuff and you just can't find it? What happens if you are in that category? Well, you're in that category if you want to be in that category. That's the only way you end up there. Because if you stop, you are there. You arrived at unsuccessful population increase by one. But that's a choice. That's a destination you choose to pitch a tent in and live there. You don't have to be there. But it's a temporary destination. Everybody goes through that in the early stages, unsuccessful attempts. But the adversities that successful people see, they see them as mile markers or rungs on a ladder. I'll give you an example. My concern when I first started in 1992 was I was afraid to get into a trade. It was so uncomfortable for me to get to the point where I would feel conviction enough to say, hey, this makes sense for me to to buy because I was only trying to be a permable. You know, I didn't understand shorting and I was looking for any reason to be in an oversold condition where a market should go up. And in my mind, in the limited perspective I had in infancy as a trader and very, very small amount of knowledge, like it was it was embarrassing to even think about trading with real money. But I tried it. But the fear of getting in was overwhelming. That fear of, what if I do it wrong? What if I lose? I can't afford to lose this. Like, this is money I borrowed against a credit card for Pete's sake. It's, <laughs> it's not smart to do those things. But I was being desperate because people do things for one of two reasons, inspiration and desperation. And I was desperate to leave the mundane, the average. I didn't want to be that. Just like you don't want to be that. That's why you're trying to do this. You want better than what you have right now. And that's not greed. There's no reason for you to be um, conflicted morally about that. For some of you that are spiritual and, and you walk a spiritual life and you think that you know, trading is, is gambling. Well, if you do reckless things, then it is gambling. But investing is smart. It's a good stewardship, investing, not gambling. Having a mindset about adversities, like for instance, mine was fear of getting into a move. How can I overcome this? Well, I had to have multiple choices. I needed to have an arsenal that I didn't have one way to do something and have it potentially be wrong. If you only have one technique, okay, let's think about like a martial art. You had one technique and, and you could only be successful in that combat if you were able to correctly time and employ this technique. But if you were unsuccessful in it, then you are at risk of failing. Does that sound like a good strategy? <laughs> no. So in my mind, because I'm obsessively compulsive, I needed to come up with a myriad of different ways to get in. That way, if I understand the market, 
I understand the conditions that the market's tr presently trading in. Is it moving higher? Is it moving lower? Is it consolidating? Is this going to stay in a consolidation, but reach for stops and come back to the middle? We'll talk about that in the book, by the way. Oh, he's trying to sell his book. No, I'm just telling you. There's things that you'll see in that that I won't talk about anywhere else. But there's different ways to use what you're learning. And you need to have a, a tactic, a technique, a weapon a tool at your disposal for that correct present tense in the market. There's a way to look at price in any given time and say, okay, a breaker is not appropriate right now because we're trending. It's already done the work of what a breaker would be doing. So what are you looking for a breaker for? It's not applicable right now. So every time I would create a, concept that would give me confidence that I can navigate price within a, a given market profile or schematic or roadmap of how it should behave or deliver price, I would gain more confidence. And decades later, I'm here, I'm talking to you now, and I have 81 entry methods. Now, for some of you, that sounds absolutely ludicrous it's ridiculous nobody should need that you're right nobody needed that but me i was wired this way to think this way and i never looked at it as a problem because it was overcoming adversities my adversity initially was fear of getting in so i took that adversity and treated it as an objective to overcome now it's laughable for me to even think about how it was when I was 1992, thinking, man, I'm scared to get in that. Where do I buy? Where? Where do I buy? I have 81 reasons that I could reach to to get into a move. Buying and selling. Pyramiding, adding something to an existing trade. I do not fear getting into a trade. I don't fear missing a move. Because I did the work of not hiding my face, cowering away from adversities, pretending that they don't exist and putting blinders up and saying, well, you know, I got it right here. Let's ignore where I got it wrong and never really tackle the real core issues, the root problems. I looked at it when, and honestly, with myself, I said, look, you know, I can't be sitting here watching moves take off without me, regretting it. And lying to myself inwardly that I could have got into that when I had no idea why I would have been buying at that point. In hindsight, in the beginning, when you're brand new, it tricks you into thinking that you could have got that if you just would have pushed a button. And that is self-abuse. You're abusing yourself when you do that. You're lying to yourself when you do that. You don't have the experience. You don't have the skill set in the beginning. So why are you holding yourself up to the standards of you should have it by then? You don't. And when I talk to you this way, a first time viewer or someone that's got their head up their own ass will see that I'm not trying to encourage you. I'm trying to talk down to you. And that's not the truth. I'm trying to tell you to think properly. I'm trying to realign your perspective because in the beginning, you're like a boat without a rudder and wherever the wind carries you, that's where you'll be. And chances are, it's probably not a port of destination you want to dock at. So. Over this weekend, I want you to think about what, what are the adversities that you feel right now for yourself? And I'm not saying post them in a tweet and then regret it later on because some asshole is going to come out there and make fun of you. These are for your personal reflection. Your journal entry this weekend before the market opens on Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Before that occurs, I want you to have something in your journal that's honest. Be honest with yourself. List the things. It may not be a long list it, for others. It may be a long list of things that you think are paramount issues right now that you see as adversities. These are the barriers. These are the blockers. These are the linebackers that are saying, you shall not pass. You're not going to score today. Not today. Whatever they are right now, list them. Once you list them, number them in the order of greatest importance 
where you feel that they're debilitating to you, that they are the very rocks in your shoe that you just can't, you just can't go forward without having these painful things keep popping up. For me, mine was the fear of getting into a trade. The way I overcame that was I did most of my work on developing skill sets to help me identify times when I get in a trade and trusting it. How did I do that? Back testing, looking at old moves, what things kept re reoccurring all the time when they would do these specific things. And I was not looking at no fucking support and resistance. I was looking for patterns in price action. What were these things doing constantly? Constantly. What was the thing that kept reoccurring over and over and over again that books are hiding from me? Because that was the mindset I had. I, I have a very conspiratorial view on the world because we're in a simulation, whether you realize it or not. And everything you're being bombarded with outwardly is a lie. They're lying to you. The media is lying to you. Educational institutions are lying to you. The people that work in the financial industry are lying to you. And they drink the Kool-Aid and they think that they're given a title. So therefore, they go along with it. You should be respecting them because they're, they're pillars in the industry. They're clowns. Some days they're just not wearing their makeup. Your adversities are your first objectives, not making money. That's where all of you mess up. That's what I had to discover because I was trying to take every book that I could buy, every BCR tape, for some of you don't even know the hell that is, everything that I was trying to you know, instill in me in terms of knowledge was failing me because I was trying to take the buffet approach. I like what he said there. I mean, use that. Oh, that makes sense to me right there. Let me take that. Not listening to money management. Not listening to how to prevent drawdown. They all say, it's going to happen. Just accept it. But nobody came up with a plan on how to alleviate the impact of it and correctly mitigate it. Grow it back. So my other barrier was... In my infancy, I didn't know what I was doing. I overcame the fear of getting into a trade by having four or five things that in the beginning, the first couple of years, I had four or five ways of getting into a trade. They're obsolete. It's, a, you know, it's not even worth mentioning what they are, but I've already taught them in older tutorials, You know, just using the swing lows and swing highs after three candles on a low where it has a one candle, any time frame. We'll just use it as a daily chart for the sake of discussion here. If you're looking at a market, any market, I don't give a shit what it is. If you have yesterday's low and then today's low is lower and then tomorrow's low is higher than yesterday. In other words, there's three days now. There's a low with a higher low on both sides. That's a swing low. When I see that and I'm expecting price to go higher, and if it's a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, the next day, you have a 70% chance that you're going to get something that is extremely bullish in the morning session. If you if you use something like a bullish breaker, uh, the first down close candle after an impulse run, it comes back and touches that again. That's a good order block. Uh, the first fair value gap that forms after that in the morning session, if you use that, you can be long there. And if you just did that, you have a 70% strike right there. But you're not going to wait for that setup. It's not every week. So you abandon it. So there's ways to take the things I've taught you and there's criteria in the marketplace where it fits. Oh yeah, boom, there it is. What most of you are not understanding is I have 81 ways to get into a trade, but those 81 ways can be used dozens of ways in and of themselves, which is why you see critics and assholes out there that are jealous. They'll say, this guy's got an excuse for everything he's getting into. You're fucking right, I do. Because this is PhD level shit. It's technical science. We're not talking about retail technical analysis. I needed to know every fucking thing. I needed to know that because I obsessively worried about it. I don't obsessively I don't obsess about nothing about worrisome things in the marketplace. I know when I shouldn't touch it and I know when I should be all over that shit. Touchy feely, like white on rice. 
up close and personal, intimate, lover-like, <laughs> okay? That type of thing comes by obsession that later became passion. I was not passionate in the beginning. I was obsessive. I needed to do these things to make myself comfortable by doing something I was terrified of in the beginning. I was scared to death of losing any money because I couldn't afford to lose any bit of it. And when my first trade was instituted in an orange juice option and I lost 50% of it, $750 overnight waking up and it's less than you had in your account. That's traumatizing for me. Like I was a young guy and didn't come from anything. And I really was baptized in the most appropriate manner possible. I was not rewarded. I was not rewarded for dumb shit. Stupidity should be painful. And it was. And I learned from that. I waited the rest of that year. I didn't do anything. I saved up money. I said, okay, I need to know what the hell I did wrong because somebody just took $750 out of me. Somebody took 750 bucks. I need to learn what they did so that way I can do the same thing. I need a victim. And before I can become a victim or before I can find a victim, I have to stop being a victim and become an apex predator. So my mindset was looking at all the adversities that I was feeling at the time. I might never get this. This is going to be harder than I thought. It's going to take longer than I. So you think I didn't have a, all those same thoughts you're feeling right now that you've been wrestling with for months. Maybe longer. Maybe before you, before you even found me, you were wrestling with this stuff. You've tried trading, failed, put it down for a little while, and you just keep coming back to it like your tongue goes to a piece of meat between your teeth. You are a trader, but you're just letting the gambler run the show. The way you put the gambler in the back seat is you focus on the things that you are fearful of. How many things are you fearful of that are in the rear view mirror of your fucking car? Not many. I mean, a tailgater might be, yeah, but you're really not afraid of that fucker, are you? Because you're, you're brake checking the bitch. You know exactly what the fuck you're doing is dangerous and it's reckless. And, oh, you're riding too close on my ass? You want to ride on my ass today? Oh, you picked the right one, bitch. Watch this. Right? That's the only fear or concern you have in your rear view mirror. But everything in the windshield in front of you, you're concerned about all that stuff. Is there a child getting ready to walk out in front of me? Is there people riding a bike? Is there a car parked on the side of the road? Is there a cop sitting down there that's got his trunk open? You, you know damn well he's running radar, but he thinks that you can't understand that he's trying to do a speed trap. Everything that you're concerned about, justifiably so, is in front of you, just like your trading is right now. So where are your hazards? Where are you going to undo yourself? What are you going to be thinking about that's going to be problematic, that you're going to spend too much fucking time obsessively worrying about and not saying, okay, it's okay for me to have concern about this. It's normal for you to be concerned about drawdown that would lead to a blown account. It's normal for you to feel um, apprehension and less confident if your strike rate is very, very low. That's all normal things for you to be concerned about in the beginning. Absolutely normal. There's nothing abnormal about that at all. It is absolutely incorrect of you to obsessively worry about those things and all the energy and time that you put into that while you're at work, while you're looking at price charts, while you're paper trading, demo trading, back testing, tape reading, where you're just watching price and getting a feel for the delivery. If you're finding your mind drift away to, I wish I would have, I wish I wouldn't have, you need to stop. Out loud, say it to yourself. These are incorrect time-wasting things I'm thinking about right now. My focus will be on positive encouragement. I'm going to see the things come into my hands in time. I am submitting to how much time it's going to take. I don't know what that is right now, and I don't need to know. Because everything I'm doing today right now is making me one, one step closer to what it is I'm trying to get to. And my dreams are far better, better and broader than I can see right now because my limited perspective holds me back. And I'm excited to see where I go. Fear can't live in that. 
Fear cannot reside in your mind at that time when you speak that way. You're speaking against your adversities. You're treating them like a fucking doormat. You're showing up to their door and knocking. I'm here, motherfucker. I'm not afraid. I'm coming in and I'm setting up house for myself here. You're not coming into my fucking world, making me stress out. I'm showing up at your doorstep. I'm going to overtake you. I'm not fearful of this thing. I'm not fearful of never getting where I want to be. I know I'm getting there. I'm not stopping. So therefore I'm getting there. I might be delayed in my arrival, but I'm going to show the fuck up when I get there. Everything I'm doing today is one step closer to that goal. Every adversity is an objective for you to tackle. Put your targets right on it. And eventually that list that you have that are worrisome to you right now, you'll be knocking them off like a hit list. Oh, that one's dead. This one has no power over me. This one has no influence over me. This was a joke. I don't even know why we even considered it. This right here is something that now I use as a confidence builder. So what are you doing? What you're doing is, is you're having a, a paradigm shift from picking things out that are scary to you. The boogeyman syndrome. These are the things that are going to get you. They're going to hurt you. They're going to take from you. They're going to embarrass you. People are going to laugh at you because you endured these things and never could overcome them. And you never given a thought to simply just, what do I need to do to overcome this? Me, I had had lots of different ways. In the beginning, I tell all of you to pick one PD array. Because ultimately, whether you learn all of them or not, your trading is going to hinge on predominantly one of them. That's just the way it is. I mean, human nature, that's just the way it is. It doesn't mean that you can't use the other PD arrays in your trades, but you're going to, you're going to draw more action, more trades from one PD array, one specific thing that I'm teaching you. You're going to gravitate to that more than anything else because it's going to be like your paintbrush of choice. Like, Bob Ross, you know, he, had, he had several brushes there when he was painting. But most of the time, he used that fan brush and that fine bristled one. And then he would use the big broad one when he had to the, you know, add the, the shit in the sky and spread it around. So most of his show was three paint brushes. But he had a whole shitload of them next to him. Now think about that. He had a specific set of colors that he started with. He wasn't saying, well, let me describe this one too. No, he had already in his mind, he had his model. He knew what he was looking for. He wanted that blank canvas to show what he had in his mind or with the picture, which you didn't many times see on the offside. He was actually painting a picture off camera. And the whole time he's talking to you, he's teaching you how to trust the process. And did you hear him? He sounds like he's this eight fucking, you know, funny brownies. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's literally calm, cool, chill with his fucking afro sitting up there, hippied out. Look at all this. This is really, I'm going to just paint a little happy tree right here. Oh, there's no mistakes. This is, you know, this is, you know, everything's great. Everything's real nice. But everything in the beginning starts with a certain number of colors. Nothing else but them. And at the end, you're like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? The first few minutes of him painting on that canvas, your mind's buzzing, trying to figure out, what is he doing? Like, what the hell is that? That's where you're at in your trading right now. That's where you're at. And I'm trying to be the Bob Ross to you and quietly and calmly remind you that everything you're doing, if you submit to the process, you will get the results that you're looking for. And everybody else, when they look at you in the beginning, they're going to be thinking the same thing. What the hell is he doing? What is she doing? Listen to this guy. He's talking too much shit. Doesn't this guy trade with a demo? He's trying to teach people how to make money. Why are you listening to this guy? It won't make sense to other people. It won't feel comfortable for you. Because you want encouragement. A weak mind needs outward encouragement. You don't have a weak mind. 
You have a mind that is not experienced yet. So it's normal for you to doubt yourself. It's normal for you to feel like you don't have it all together. And what if, what if you can't do it? That's normal. That's normal thoughts. But just change the, the, the terms there. What if you do far fucking better than you ever thought you could? What happens if you get it sooner than you thought it was going to be? What happens when you can start doing things that you never could fucking afford or imagine you could have afforded? When you walk into a store, you're not looking at price tags. You don't give a shit what that receipt said, how much it just took out of your bank account, because you know more is coming in. What if you don't have those problems that you have right now? And they're replaced with things to do that are enriching to your life and other people that you know. That's how you should be doing this. You treat all of your adversities. Oh, but ICT, you don't know. I'm, I'm in a nation right now that's poor. I have made people in Africa fucking rich, okay? Rich. There's no fucking excuse for you. You're not going to tell me a valid excuse that will absolutely solidify your failure. It ain't going to happen. It, it, there's no more excuses. So there's no reason for you to be pussyfooting around saying, but this is what I'm afraid of. So, you know, I'm just going to let it lord over me and I'm never going to be successful. And I have a perfect excuse why I never got there because this bad thing that just keeps coming up in my mind or this thing that I keep repeating over and over again and never really made an effort to overcome it with proper replacement. That's not coping skills. Coping skills are beneficial for things like anxiety. I've taught that and they're. They're valid. But in trading, you don't want to be coping with anything. You want to replace negative, unsuccessful characteristics. You want to prune them, remove them like a fucking cancer, cut them out of you. And yes, it hurts. Yes, after it happens and you remove it from yourself, it, you don't feel like, oh, did I do the right thing? You're hurting. Just like any other wound would be if you went to have surgery, have something surgically removed from your ass. That's normal. But some of you are thinking, yeah, that small little period of growing after the painful departure from doing these things and thinking this way, that's enough for me to not want to do it. I'm comfortable with this adversity. We're good friends. It's normal. I know my routine every day. I think about these things negatively all the time. It's normal for me to feel these constant doubts. I can't imagine a world where I'm not doing that. You don't realize it. But that's exactly what your subconscious is telling you. Don't make any changes because change is scary. It's probably going to take a whole lot more effort to make these changes. And you've convinced yourself through self-talk, either internally or outwardly, that you either deserve what you're going through, putting yourself through, or why bother? Because it's probably going to be a failure to make an attempt to change it. So you hold and hug and embrace and have a relationship a destructive, abusive relationship with these adversities instead of saying, you're cancerous, motherfucker. You got to go. You can't live with me anymore. You got to go. Today's fucking moving day. Pack your shit. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not coping with you no more. You don't exist. You're not formidable enough to fucking stop me. You're not holding me fucking back. Get the fuck out of my fucking way. That's the mindset. Not just in trading and everything. In everything. Adversities are always going to be there. And anything you do. How you deal with them. How you think about them. How you give them power and authority over you. That's the deciding factor. Whether you succeed or fail in overcoming them. But you can't hide from them. You can't pretend they don't exist. You fucking identify them, point them out and say, your ass is out of here, motherfucker. You don't get to stay here no more. You attack it. Your mind's a battlefield. It's constantly at war. As soon as you turn on those charts, you have now stepped on the battlefield. Decisions. Should I or shouldn't I? How much? How much should I risk today? How many trades am I going to take today? 
how many um, points am I going to allow for a stop loss? Am I going to use a stop loss today? Every time I use a stop loss, I get stopped out and it feels uncomfortable. Well, how about this? Be fucking thankful that you didn't lose your entire account. Be thankful that that loss was limited to where your stop loss is. That's the right fucking mindset. But you're not thinking about it that way. You're not thinking about these assholes. They got me again. Oh, I did something stupid. I didn't wait for the fucking fair value gap. I tried to anticipate it and I tried to get in early. Dumb. I I, I lost because I put a stop loss in. It went to an area where it was supposed to go. But you're going to lie to yourself and say, oh, this shit doesn't work. No, you aren't working. You're not doing the fucking work. You aren't doing that stuff. And this is hard work pruning bad shit off of you. It's hard to do that. Because you've become accustomed to having these negative excuses to lean on when you don't succeed. Because you want immediate gratification. You want immediate success, overnight success. Lambo lifestyle. Overnight, guaranteed, or your money back. That's what the media has given you. These expectations that you need that to be successful or deemed successful. You don't. I wish I could encapsulate. I wish I would have took the picture of my son's face. You know, I, I was talking to him in front of Caleb last night. I said, How does it feel? How does it feel to see what you work all week to earn at a coffee shop? Putting up with fucking ignorant fucking self-entitlement pieces of shit. Talking down to you. Thinking that you're subhuman. You're a fucking servant. That they can wipe their fucking shoes on you like a doormat. How does it fucking feel? To know that you did your whole week and more, a little bit more actually, in one day using one contract. How does that feel? He goes, I'm wasting my time, Dad. I'm wasting my time doing this. And that's exactly the fucking target I was aiming for. That was the fucking target I have been aiming for all year long with this boy. And I have been peacocking like a motherfucker around this fucking house, flaunting my ass in front of my wife saying, yep, I fucking told you. I told you it would happen. I told you. I fucking told you. And this ain't it. He's going up. He's going to fucking arrive at every fucking goal he's ever had because the look on his face last night said it all. Fuck working. Fuck a fucking job. He's made the best ever decision to not go to college. It's exactly what I fucking want him to do. Because college education, that might be great for some people. But guess what? If you're listening to me, you're not a fucking worker. You're not a fucking servant. You're not a fucking pissant. You're somebody that's going to go out there and grab it by the fucking throat, throttle its fucking ass, and drag it back home because it's yours. You fucking took it. That's how it's supposed to be. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. This world owes you fuck all. It doesn't owe you shit. You got to go out there and take it by fucking force. And if you ain't paying attention, looking around, everybody that's blind to this shit, they're trying to make it impossible for you to have your own fucking way in this world. They're trying to strangle it from every one of you. All of you need to pay attention because it's going to be crunch time here real fucking soon. You need to fix the shit that's broken in you. Identify it. Don't hide from it. Adversities are obstacles right now that are easily overcome when you identify them and put your fucking boot on their throat. Choke the fucking life out of these things because adversities are an illusion. They're an illusion. That's all they are. These are things. They're not even fucking tangible. They're not. They're in your head. What if I fail? Where does Okay. Describe what that looks like. What does it taste like? Does it have a smell? Fuck no, it's not real. It's a fucking emotional thought, okay? It's your response to a negative fucking thinking of many, many times never happening. How many what if thinking events have you had just this fucking week that you worried about, you had anxiety about, you stressed about? 
that never even fucking happened. And all that time and the energy that you wasted and concern that you applied to that. How much better would you have been if you have taken that, redirected it into something positive and saying, see, you're not effective anymore. You can't hold me back anymore. I'm afraid to lose ICT. I'm afraid that I'm going to take a loss. Okay, go out and lose. Go out there and lose in a manner where you can absorb it. Very, very small, very, very small little paper cuts. And every time you have one, write down what you were expecting to see in the chart, how you felt, and at the end, how do you feel now that it happened? You're going to get to your root cause of what's causing you to take those trades, and it's going to be many times impulsiveness. Top of the list, it's impulsiveness. So how do you correct impulsiveness? You have a fucking plan with rules that says, I can only trade at this time if this appears in the chart. If it's not in the chart yet, I can't fucking touch the chart. I can't push the button. I can't do shit. I cannot risk more than a micro lot, single micro lot. That's how you should be measuring your results right now. Before you even start trading with a demo, your mindset should be, I'm only looking at the lowest denominator. The lowest thing I can make money on, that's the lowest amount of leverage. How many have you done that? Chances are. Probably not even 10% of you. You want to do fucking five contracts. <sighs> I'm going to say something right now, and it's probably going to offend some of you. Just understand what I'm saying. It's rooted in sincerity. Some of you are literally walking around talking about how you're going to take a hundred fucking dollar account and turn it into an empire. Do you understand that while you may be limited in your reach for finances right now, and $100 is something you can obtain and use and speculate on? I understand that. But you're placing such an Olympic fucking feat on something that's highly unlikely. And you're placing so much emphasis on you're going to do it. And I look, I'm all for confidence, okay? I'm not trying to be, you know, hypocritical here. Cheerleading you and telling you this and do this. But you have to be properly funded. And you have to be realistic too. Can some of you, can I take a hundred dollar account and turn it into whatever the fuck I want? And given enough time, yes. But are you where you're at right now in your present development, are you really equipped to do that? If you're not, be honest with yourself. Why would you try to do that? And when you fail, it's just going to be one more little thing for you to feel frustration over. Why would you want to do that? Because you're not, you're not going to feel empowered as a trader, if you did it, because if you're honest, you're going to look back and say, oh, yeah, I was over leveraging there. I didn't trade with a stop loss. I took a lot of stupid things and thought they were trades because I was just trying to push. You're gambling. That's not trading. That's gambling. You're doing a scratch off mentality. You want to, you go to a store where they sell lottery tickets and you take it and you scratch it off with whatever you're scratching off. And there it is. And if you win, there's no skill involved. There's zero skill in that. That's, that's real random shit right there. Everything I'm talking to you and teaching you with has nothing to do with randomness. You have to identify how you think in the negative aspects. Don't hide from them. Don't pretend they don't exist. Don't pretend that, you know, well, that's not really, you know, something to be worried about. It is because you are what you think. If you're fearful and doubtful about your ability to trade, guess what's going to manifest itself when you push the button? That's using the driver's seat. So why are you fucking surprised when you have the results that you're getting? Why is that a mystery? Why are you tweeting to me? What's wrong with me? Why aren't you asking that of yourself in your journal and doing personal reflections where no one can judge you? And I don't know what you're thinking. I can't fix that for you. 
You have to identify these trigger things that happen in you. And be honest. It might be embarrassing if you were to say it out loud in front of other people, but it should not be embarrassing for you to record it in your journal. That's your safe place. That's the thing that your fortress of solitude. Not a motherfucker can touch you there. No one can ridicule you. No one can make fun of you. No one can hurt your feelings. That's the monster laboratory. You're building a fucking monster in the pages of that journal. You have to feed it. It needs to be fed. And it grows on eating and devouring negative fucking shit. Chomping it the fuck down, grinding it into bits. And then you feed it dessert. Self-love. I'm so thankful that I've been doing this skill set or this approach to studying. I'm seeing the fruits of it. You feed that journal that, and then you read it. You don't write it and then just never look at it again. You have to treat everything like you're nurturing a child. Because in you, if you're brand new, that traitor is still a baby. Are you going to feed a baby? If you gave birth to a, a child, are you going to give it everything that's harmful to it? You're going to feed its mind with stupid shit on TV? Letting it shape its mind and opinions about things? No. You're going to try to nurture it, shield it from bullshit, protect it, guard it. That's exactly what you're doing with the future self as a trader in a journal. And anybody, any fucking clown joke asshat that says journaling doesn't work, I guarantee you, I fucking promise you, they're broke. They're fucking broke. They don't know how to fucking trade consistently. They can't trade their fucking way out of a wet paper bag, but they're going to give you advice. They're miserable people. They have never overcome their own problems. So they use social media like a sharp stick and go around and poke everybody else because it's a distraction from their own misery. If you got time to go on the internet and talk about everybody else, your life fucking must really fucking suck. The most active fucking people out there are hateful. They are the brokest and morally inept pieces of shit that's ever existed. But yet, social media, people will listen to that. Because it's a distraction, again, of their own pain. Ain't nobody saying anything about me that I fucking feel regret about. I ain't losing any sleep. It's all fucking laughable comedy, comedy to me. And I know that I own them. If they're, talk, if they're talking shit about me, I own them. They're bringing traffic to my fucking channel. And I'm bringing receipts. I'm producing fruit in all of you. If you don't tackle your adversities, if you don't single them out and come up with a way where you're going to overcome them, they will hold you hostage and captive. And a mind held in captivity is never allowed to be creative. It's never going to be progressive, innovative. Why bother? I'm going to fail anyway, right? That's what it does because that's what it thinks and feels and is fed all the time. If you feed your mind and your subconscious negativity all the time or doubt or self-doubt, that's exactly how you're going to live every day of your life. And that is a horrible existence. And I lived that for a long time. I lived in fear and anxiety and agoraphobia. You don't want that. I would have rather had my limbs cut off than to go back through that again. Your mind is extremely powerful. Way more powerful than you think. You don't use it properly. And you feed it toxicity. And you wonder why you don't have any energy. You wonder why you don't have any creative thoughts. You don't have any self-worth or value because that's what you've been feeding it. The contrary. You keep telling yourself you're not going to be able to do it. I'm going to fail. Why bother? This stuff never works. I'm tired, I'm tired of seeing ICT constantly making money, and I don't understand this. Dude, 
that's a, an account on Twitter I've already muted. They can read me. They can see my stuff, but I've muted that person. You know who I'm talking about. And if you do, don't troll them. But if you're not going to listen to good advice and stop talking outwardly in a negative tense, speaking negative about yourself, constantly measuring yourself against everybody else's results. I'm tired of ICT. What? Helping you? Keeping you out of your own way? That's another account that I'll mute. Because that's a mindset I can't fix. And to see that shit, I just cut it out. It's cancer to me. I cut it the fuck out. You have to do that in your personal life. You have friends and family members that are just like that. They're vampires. They're sucking the fucking life out of you. You want so badly to be able to sit down and tell them, look, man, I'm so passionate and excited about what I'm going to do. Check this out. Because you want to share your excitement about the potential for you to live a different life doing this. That You didn't just get gifted it. It's a skill set you have to work for. Yeah, I taught you for fucking free, but you still got to do the fucking work. And you're passionate about that. You're excited. You're optimistic. And you want to just simply sit down with somebody that you love and you trust and you've had a, a relationship with a long time with. And you want them to look at you and say, you know what? That's fucking amazing. I can't wait to see you do it. And if you do well, can you help me? That's what you want to hear from them. And guess what they do? Fuck that. I ain't doing that. that sounds fucking stupid. Or that's going to fail. Oh, man, you're watching. If they don't do it to your face, they're going to say it to their fucking friends that you share friendship with. I had friends on both sides of the coin that said I wasn't going to be able to. And others that didn't say it to my face, but said it to others. And they're all fucking working today. Low paying jobs in homes that are not all that great. In neighborhoods that are all not that well. And they look horrible. They look like the life has just ran into a meat grinder because they held on to that type of thinking. Every time somebody sees me, they're like, there's no way you're fucking 51 years old. That's great. Thank you. I don't stay out in the fucking sun. I don't try to dry myself out like a fucking raisin. I eat well. I exercise. And I live a life that is, in my mind, I'm, I'm trying to be empowering to not only myself, my family, but all of you. I try to live a positive life. I try to be optimistic in everything, and I try to filter out negativity all the time. I have friends that are younger than me because of the life choices they make and how they think. They've been accused of being my father. Now think about that. One of them is one year younger than me. That's shocking. You wonder where I get all this energy from? How are you able to do just four hours sleep twice a day and a cat nap here and there? Because I ain't got fucking time for negative shit. I ain't got time for it. I got shit to do, things to build, things to fucking get done, people to inspire and encourage and empower. And I got to hit the fucking supercharger here coming in November because things are going to get harder. And even though I have lots of money and a skill set that makes me able to get more money, it doesn't change the fact that I'm going to have to guard my mind. And social media will be a vampire. If I give it the power and time, which I'm not going to, I'm going to have enough on my plate constantly encouraging my family, constantly encouraging my close friendships. Guarding them, keeping them on the right way of handling themselves, and maybe even carrying some of them. So when I talk to you and I'm teaching you these ways of thinking, it's not just an entertaining listen to or maybe boring the fucking socks off of you. It's to change the way you think. Adversities are obstacles. Right now, that you are viewing as a barrier or a roadblock. Nope. That's an area of opportunity. That's a target of opportunity is what that is. <laughs> to use as a military expression. 
a target of opportunity is never wasted. Well, I guess it is wasted in a way, isn't it? But it's always blown to fucking bits. If a target presents itself and invites you to dismantle it, you do it. So your brain is saying, this is something that we need to engage. This is a threat. But you have talked to yourself into thinking, uh, it might be a threat. And I agree with you. It's a threat. But it's too much for me. So I'm going to just let it bully me and give it my lunch money. And uh, we'll call it a day. And there it is. I'll live to fight another day. That's a passive mindset that literally creates victimhood that you've done to yourself. You're inviting that every single day when you think that way versus being, oh, you're trying to steal my attention. You're trying to divert my attention and energy away from what it is I should be focusing on that it's going to empower me and my family and, and include myself in the ranks of those that are considered successful. You're doing that right now. You have to be fucking terminated. That's it. There's no other fucking recourse for you. You have to be dismantled and terminated. You don't reside here anymore. You're not in my thoughts anymore. You're not in my fucking concerns. You're getting wasted. And I'm going to overpower you with things that I'm going to defeat you. And I won't refer back to you as a fearful concern anymore. I'm afraid of losing. Don't over leverage. What? You're afraid of losing because you are afraid that you're going to lose a lot of money. If you're using the lowest form of leverage, why are you afraid of that? Um... I don't use the lowest form of leverage. Hello. That was fucking easy, wasn't it? But you want to hold on to, but I really want to trade 15 contracts, ICT. I've seen guys on there and they do 15 contracts and they've made money, but you're not seeing them press the reset button, are you? See, you want to cherry pick what you take in as... But they showed me this, but they didn't show you that. You want the sugar. You want the high. You want the dopamine. And you won't allow for any doubts to come in to the things that you see other people, maybe even me, influencing you. Man, I see two, man, he, $200 per point. Wow, look at that. Five minutes, $15,000. I want to trade like that. Why? That's not the thought process I wanted you to have. That is not what the fuck I put that video up on YouTube for. That's not why I did that. Someone sincerely asked in the comment section. I get all the time people saying, can you do it in a live account? Can you do this? Can you do that? You fucking fake this, that, the other thing, you demo trader. And people in the comment section still, you're still demo trading. When's the last time you saw a demo trade? <laughs> I'm not doing it. But that person asked respectfully, can you show me not, there's no hate here. Oh, that was framed properly. That was properly framed uh, framed in, in a way where I wasn't offended by that. But it's tiresome constantly seeing people ask for something that I've already done. If they just simply watch the videos, they're there. I did trade in front of people in a live stream. I called exactly what was going to happen and it did it perfectly to the fucking tick. But I'm not obligated to you. I don't have to do those things. The selling point is not me doing it with a live account in front of you. That's live streaming while live trading. I never said I was going to do that. Look at what people do with my stuff now. You don't think that there's going to be jokers out there sitting there thinking, man, if he could just do this live, I would copy him and run a Telegram or a Discord channel and just literally repeat whatever he's doing. And they would look so smart. I won't give that. I will not give that. I am a very, very jealous fucking guru because I already seen, already knew years ago on America Online. It started then, people trying to be me. And now, because I'm the flavor of the month, and hopefully it'll diminish when I stop being so active. Somebody else will be 
emulated and and sought after. And I can't wait to see who it is. But all that's toxic too. So my way of defeating that stuff, that which is an issue for me, an adversity for me is dealing with what all of you try to do with me. The goat, the greatest of all time. You know, fuck that. I don't like that. And some of you still don't want to listen and it offends me. So that's a problem for me. The longer I stay on social media, it seems like I'm fanning the flames for that to be done. I don't want you to do that. So an, an, an adversity to me is the toxic feelings I have towards other people that are fucking stupid. They're asking for evidence that I've already given copious amounts of. I got more students on YouTube doing what I've taught than any other form of trading out there. And these individuals push a button, show you executions. You're among that rank of people right now. You are in history where you're literally watching a transition from normal retail thought. Told you she would <laughs> told you she would make herself a name. Hi, Piper. You wanna be you wanna be heard, woman? Yes, I am woman. Hear me roar. Gotta get all the attention on you, huh? <laughs> But when you find success, and you will, give it enough time, it'll, you'll get there. But you now will take these, uh, I guess, outward opinions other people are going to have of you. And you're going to let that sometimes mold you into an egomaniac. Hold on one second. I had to tell my wife I was letting her out. She'll slip through there. We have an iron fence around her pool area, and she's still small enough to walk through it. So she's not watching her. She'll just creep out and do a escape. <laughs> Piper, the Houdini escape artist. But when you do find success, it's important that you don't take the gratuitous comments and worship that people will lay at your feet don't take that stuff and think too highly of yourself. It's important to stay humble. It's important to stay grounded. It's important to not think too highly of yourselves because adversity will still manifest itself in some way, shape, or form. And then what you'll do is, is you'll start to lean on worship by other people. Wow, you're the goat. Wow. You're the greatest that's ever, ever done it. You're the best. There's no one like you. What are you doing? You're looking for outward attention, confirmation, and worship. And that is going to be used as a crutch mentally and emotionally when other forms of adversity are going to creep in. For me, I'm 51 years old. My body's talking to me. I can, I can feel how my body's changing inside. I can feel my back hurts me a whole lot worse now than it ever has. And I think to myself, what it's going to feel like when I'm 60? What's it going to feel like if I'm in my 80s, if the Lord gives me that much time? How much more painful is it going to be? So I have to take those thoughts and seize them by their throats. And say, well, I'm just going to take better care of myself. I'm not going to do such a heavy weight. I'm not going to do so much exertion. I'm going to do a lot more resting and let my body heal and focus more on inflammation and how to mitigate that. So all of these adversities, whether it be in trading, whether it be in your personal life, whether it be in your relationships, you can't walk around them like they're not in the room with you. And in your head, you certainly can't escape them. So you might as well just deal with them. It's uncomfortable. might be scary. But once you subdue them, once you choke the fucking life out of them, and they have no more power and influence over you, 
no fear grip of intimidation on you. It's liberating. That's real empowerment. It's clarity. It gives you the visibility to see the things that you are supposed to be watching for. So that way you can identify the opportunity. Instead of seeing an opportunity and immediately your subconscious speaks up and says, it could be an opportunity, but remember the last time you did this? This is what happened. Fuck that. Fuck that. No, 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 no. The whole point of you journaling was you to replace that shit. Remove toxic negative thinking. These are what the opportunities look like. This is what the opportunity resembles. This is what the pattern looks like. When it does this, I am expecting it to do that as an outcome. Bullish? Great. I'm going to buy something at a discount. What? Whatever PD or rated you like. That I've given you freedom to be selective in. Because nobody can take you and press you into their fucking 40-day, 120-day, one-week, one-fucking-month course. And now you're going to walk out a trading terminator. The only thing that's getting terminated is your fucking account. Because you're rushing to do something that is extremely technical. Largely linked to psychological and emotional stimuli that we as emotional and intellectual beings... We're victims of those things. They make us tick when you look at your significant other and how wonderful they are. You can't imagine being with anybody else. Maybe last night you spent very, very, very good time. And you woke up this morning thinking, I'm really glad to have that person in my life. You appreciate them. Now, Given in a conversation, you could probably list some things that you wish you wouldn't experience with them. The little things, the little things that get on your fucking nerves that like they would be perfect if they did do this or if they did this, they would be perfect. Perfect is not possible. Your trading is not going to be perfect. Your model is not going to be perfect. It's imperfect. But you're navigating it with that. The markets are going to throw you a curveball. You're going to expect it to do certain things, and it doesn't do it, and you lose. Are you going to go unhinged and say, fuck this, fuck risk management. I'm going back in there, and I'm going to try to take it by force because I'm angry, and I have no idea why I'm taking the trade, but I'm just going to do it anyway because I feel like I need to swing on something. That's lack of discipline. How do you forge that? How do you build discipline going through pain and loss and losing your account? That's, that's the best teacher, but unfortunately it comes with scar tissue. So it's very hard for me as a mentor to try to teach you a balanced, comprehensive approach to doing it correctly because all of you are prone to do whatever it is that you're going to do. That's either reckless, undisciplined, impulsively or just gamble because you want to see something positive happen. And if it does, you'll mistakenly call it skill like I did in the beginning. Not the very beginning. The very beginning, I got my ass handed to me and I'm glad it happened. But I had nine months of pure, unadulterated fucking luck that I was convincing myself and everyone else around me that my shit didn't stink. And I had it all figured out. <laughs> and man, I didn't. <laughs> you don't want to get lucky. You don't want to have a lottery win beginning of your learning. You want it rough. It will give you the proper mindset. It'll show you how you can fail if giving yourself over to impulsive tendencies, an undisciplined mindset. And all of those things are easily overcome if you just simply let down your guard and let your real self step forward and say, okay, 
I'm comfortable being vulnerable right now because I know it's good medicine. Where are my weaknesses right now? What are the things that are scary to me? What are my fearful thoughts? What are my reasons for doubting my future success? What are the things that I'm feeling inside? What are other people saying about me that are weighing on me heavily? Some of you like to mother me and say, why do you talk to these haters? Why do you give them time? I'm not giving that hater any time. I'm actually talking through that hater. I'm literally coming back and showing them what they're saying is nonsense because there's going to be a dozen people that just find me or the content I'm giving out for free. And they'll read some joker's fucking slated opinion about me because they're trying to sell something and then nobody wants to buy it. So therefore they got to come over and try to leave something on my doorstep. So other people won't knock on the door and say, Hey, can you help me too? Because they're jealous. They're pathetic fucking losers. But I know if I answer back and say, but here's a live account, son. Here's your whole fucking month in one trade in less than five minutes, son. Here's me perfectly doing it with no drawdown, son. Here's me doing it with your fucking broker of your choice and you ain't stepping still yet, son. That's why I do it because they can see, oh, these are just words. And here's the guy doing it. Here's the guy doing it. Are you going to let other people and their opinions of you when you are successful? Are you going to let them paint boundaries that you have to do this or we can't view you as successful? Fuck all of your opinions about what success is. When I wake up, I'm not going to work. When I go to bed, I don't give a fuck what time I wake up. My body just does it. Four hours. Sometimes it's four hours and 10 minutes. Sometimes it's three hours and 45 minutes. This is in that window. But I don't go to fucking bed worrying about what I got to do when I wake up. I ain't got to worry about picking, uh, packing a fucking lunch to go to work. I ain't got to worry about my 401k. I ain't got to worry about how my fucking car payment is going to get paid. I ain't got to worry about what my wife's doing when I'm not home. I don't have all those fucking things to worry about. I have contentment. I'm at peace. And I don't have to fucking trade. Ever. Tell me what success is outside of that. Because I am the epitome of it. I don't have to charge money to fucking sell education to live. What's success? You're all going to have a different uh, idea of it. And, but when you get there, you're going to be met with people. And if you invite it, if you give room for it and give it a stage. And on Twitter, that's what I do. I provide a stage. I've been out here waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and people claiming they joined this and they did that. They didn't do shit. Where's your profitable students? Look around. Where's yours? When I say it, I mean it. And there's still always going to be two people that either agree with it or don't like what I said. So they're going to come up with some bullshit. They're going to do the same thing to you. Are you going to let them influence you? Once you find success, are you going to let them take you out of your focus? Does it mean that much to you that you got to have every fucking body believe you? Cause that's a character flaw. I don't bite back at haters and shit because I'm insecure. I'm not insecure. It's sport to me. I bait it all the time. And they've all failed. And I've been, I've been entertained by it. No one's taking me out of the thought processes that I go through every single day. I'm not losing sleep. I'm not stressed. I'm not worried about nothing. Will you be like that when you get successful?
In the beginning, probably not. You'll be afraid of, what if I lose everything? So are you, when you get to that mile marker of a millionaire, I don't want to spend any money. I have to keep a million dollars. <laughs> I don't want to drop one dollar below a million because then I won't really be a millionaire anymore. I, I experienced that. It's silly. It's silly as shit. It only lasted for a minute because it became two million and three million. <laughs> but the long and short is you will have new concerns, new adversities. So how do you prevent the fear of spending less than a million dollars and one dollar less than that? You're no longer a millionaire. It's easy. You make another fucking million dollars. Then you make another million dollars and you make another million dollars. And you do that. You'll never have that fucking fear again. Uh, ICT, do a Twitter space on how to make a million dollars. Okay, trade the silver bullet model. When you make your money, stop for the day. Don't over leverage and let time do all the heavy lifting. But, but I want a Lambo tomorrow. Huh. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Can't help everybody, right? But you certainly can help yourself. And you should. You need to identify the adversities that you're feeling and experiencing. Identify them. Walk right up to their fucking face and say, you are no longer a concern for me. Everything I do from this day forward is to beat you into submission, subdue you, and cut you out of my life as a cancer. Fear of losing money. Fear of getting it wrong. How do you, how do you overcome fear of being wrong? Journaling. And sweet talking, romanticizing how you did it incorrectly, but you've learned something from it. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. You just said that I had a negative experience, but I'm going to tell myself that this was good for me. And what lessons do I take from that? So that way I don't do it again willfully. You know what that is? That's maturity. As a 20-year-old, I could not look at it that way. Everything was an attack. Everything was a reason for me to become a, a new victim in my own hands. And that really causes an increase in self-doubt, low self-esteem. And I already had a chip on my shoulder. I wanted to prove to the world that my own parents didn't want me. So I'm going to become fucking superhuman. They're, they're all going to recognize me. So everything I did was with the highest form of output as a result, or it wasn't good enough. And I failed a lot. A lot. I failed so many times in the beginning. But guess what didn't stop? My work ethic. It just made it bigger and stronger. I was more tenacious more fucking ready to cut everything else out of my life. And everything was this. Those fucking candlesticks at the time were open, high, low, closed bars. I was going to make those motherfuckers my workers. These are my worker bees. You fucking work for me. When I first looked at them, I looked at and said, man, these things are scary. What's it going to do next? And you probably are at that stage right now because you're brand new. What's it going to do next? It's scary. Oh, look, this whipped up. It's whipped up seven handles. Look at that. Oh, I'm probably wrong. Or maybe you're just fucking paranoid and you're not trusting the model that you've been watching and studying and backtesting and have so many examples of. Sometimes it's not going to be accurate for you as the trader to engage it. Doesn't mean the model itself failed. You did it wrong. That's applicable to everything. I don't give a fuck if you're trading any other retail concept. If you took a trade, it didn't fail. You did. That's personal responsibility. But every one of us in the beginning, and some still want to hold on to it, you, when you fail, you want to have the convenience of being able to say, well, the responsibility was outside of me. It was this thing that caused me to lose money. And you wonder why you have all these mental issues about yourself, not in trading only, in everything, because you have unreasonable expectations. 
You're looking at things improperly, but telling yourself all the while that this is the correct way of doing it. And anything less is bullshit. It's making me a victim. I demand reparations. This is bullshit. This is unjustly done to me. I don't deserve this. I didn't do it. Someone else did it. Something else did it. Something else caused it. That is not someone that's going to do very well as a trader. And they sure as fuck ain't going to be a good guru mentor. People that have done this long enough in anything, not just trading, that they've done it, they've hurt themselves, they've grown through that, and they found themselves on the other side. They are the ones that have the experience. They are the ones that have the ability, the voice to listen to because they've been on both sides. You don't want to learn from someone that has just been introduced to something. They haven't in, incurred loss and worked through it, lived with it, conquered it. What did they do? How did they think about what they were going through at the time? Those are the most paramount things to be worried about as a developing trader, not what's the right order block. How do you know when a fair value gap is going to stay open? Those types of questions are the ones that are very telling as an individual because I'm not trying to say don't ask me questions, but the folks that ask those kind of questions are equivalent to the same ones that say, right after I call a move and it delivers, what's next? Now where? Where's it going to go next? That's somebody that doesn't know how to trade. That's somebody that just needs a nudge to go out there and impulsively trade when there is no setup because I say, I think it's going to go here. Okay, that's where my area of interest is. I want to see NASDAQ 15,126. I want to see it. But it has to have a context in price that allows that setup to be there. Otherwise, that's just a level I'm interested in. It might trade there next week, and I may miss the move. Am I going to go unhinged and say, fuck all this shit? It doesn't fucking work. I missed this one fucking trade. I couldn't encapsulate my entire career in this one fucking trade. Oh, let's throw it all out the fucking window. It's useless now. <laughs> it's silly to think like that, but so many of you do it just like that. When you're trying to get a funded account challenge passed, you're trying to trade your first fucking trade with your funded account. You couldn't wait to get funded. Now you have it. You have a funded account. And here you go. Within fucking five fucking minutes of getting your login details, you're in there trading at a time when there ain't no fucking reason to be in there. Let's go for it, baby. I can trade five contracts. Oh, I won't do that. Let's just do four. And max day loss. What the fuck? 21 attempts to get this shit. And here I already shit the fucking bed. Yeah. Because you're not ready. You have not learned. You want Sugar high. Not consistently boring meat and potatoes. You live long, healthy, strong, virile lives. Meat and potatoes. You're eating fucking candy bars. You're going to get fat and unhealthy. You don't want your trading to be in a diabetic fucking coma. You want things that are going to be sustainable. Things that are rooted on sound logic that have proven themselves to outpace and overcome your former adversities. The things that you were fearful of, you stopped the mud hole in it and walked it fucking dry. Now, everything in front of you is an opportunity. But do you have the maturity, the self-discipline, and control to filter out the ones that are less likely to deliver the highest yield There's levels to this, folks. And you think it's just, give me a five-minute condensed version of ICT. Make it easy for me so I can go out there and blow my fucking account. Because that's what you're asking for. Give me another shortcut excuse for me to go out there and try to do something I'm ill-prepared to do. But we'll call it fucking skill if I'm lucky. I know it doesn't sound good sometimes hearing it like that way. But folks, listen, that's just exactly what I needed to hear when I was coming up. There was nobody to do it. I didn't know anybody that had the excuse to do not do this because this is what will happen. 
I was going through it myself. I was a poster child for fucking blown accounts, feeling fearful of this, doubting myself, all that stuff. Do you see those characteristics in me today? Do you hear them in me today? Fuck no. I'm always referred to as the most arrogant fucking pompous prick there is in trading. Because I know my shit will work. I know when it will work. That's a level of confidence that you just can't get in a book. You can't go to a workshop. A guru can't teach that to you. You earn that shit. You earn it. You acquire it through sweat, work, diligent approach to studying. Adhering to fucking rules and abstaining from things that are wasteful, time-consuming, fucking negative horseshit. You cut all that stuff out. If you're listening to me today, you're on the right fucking path. You're doing that very thing. So many people are still sleeping in because they got fucking drunk last night. Some of you are probably hungover listening to this thinking, shit, I wish I wouldn't have been fucking so hungover. This would have been a better space. <laughs> What you do on your weekends tells the story of your future. And that's the truth. Your free time away from the man, the slave shop, the sweat shop, the cubicle across from fucking Carl. When everybody else just wants to sit back and chill. Give me my fucking cores. Give me my sports teams. Even my barbecues, a bag of fucking trips, and just don't bother me for a couple of days because Monday's coming again. That's not you. That's not you. You're listening to some fucking ranting, raving motherfucker telling you what you need to do and what not to do on a Saturday because you have shit to do. You have things that you want to get accomplished before you lay down for the last time. You have places to be. And you have to make assurities that you're going to be able to afford things for you and your family. So you're sacrificing your time. You're investing your time in yourself, in your future self, in your family's future. To learn and acquire a skill set from someone that's proving it to you globally, not just independently through my own actions. And you're seeing value because you didn't have to swipe a credit card. You didn't have to make a PayPal payment. There's no two-week trial. There's no coupon codes here. It's just show the fuck up. Show up. Take notes. That's it. I'm not asking anything of you. But just do the work. The things that you want to have out of life, this can deliver it for some of you. Not all of you. Some of you. Because not all of you are going to be able to do the things that are required. You haven't overcome your adversities. You didn't look at that adversity as an objective to overcome. And you need to do that initially in the beginning stages. And anytime a new adversity creeps in, whether it be in trading or any other venture that you do in life, you have to immediately go after it. You have to single-handedly stomp its ass. Everything you do is a decision. You need to ask yourself before you do it, how is this decision going to impact me? Not just today. How is it going to impact me for the coming week, coming month, coming year? How is it going to affect me as a person of character, of principle? Is this a waste of my fucking time? Am I wasting my time? Am I putting any waste of time in this venture or Providing time to someone that's not going to yield me a return on my, inv in my investment. If you're not getting something out of that, don't do it. Don't feel bad about it either. Don't even apologize. Just say, I don't have time for this. I got to go. What a rude ass motherfucker. Fuck off. You don't have to say it verbally. Wipe your feet off and leave them right where they're standing. Because the enemy likes to creep in and steal time. Cloud your mind. You won't see the opportunities in front of you. Which is why he brings adversity. 
And adversities are just simply opportunities for you to exercise what you're already growing stronger in doing, which is overcoming. Trading is overcoming uncertainty. I embrace uncertainty. Every successful trader embraces uncertainty. You have yet to see it that way because it's fearful. That darkness on the hard right edge of that chart, that's uncharted waters. You've never been there before. <laughs> None of us have. That hard right edge right now where every market you're trading, whatever it is, that's all uncharted territory. There are processes, standard operating procedures that you have to know that you are going to lean on. If this happens, I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to turn vengeful and try to get my money back right away. It's not vigilante fucking trading model. All these things maybe haven't been given much thought up until today. And I'm hoping, at least it's been my aim today, to try to put a spotlight on how we are to think about these things and not view them as reasons why not to bother or to be fearful in our attempts in trying to improve. Because that's a lie. That's why they're presented to you as an adversity to talk you out of it. Don't bother trying. It's not worth it. Don't, don't, don't worry about trying to do it. You know, imagine how much better you'll feel if you just live your life, accept the fact that what you have is the best it's going to ever be. At least you have Saturday and Sunday to, to live your life in lack and be content with that, 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 that TV channel that shows those men running around chasing a fucking piece of dead pigskin inflated and getting paid with an industry identity that never pays any income taxes. You're making all these people rich, giving them your fucking time instead of doing the things that can make what they make as a salary and live a short life. You can live a well enriched life, not beating yourself up, not enriching these fucking jokers. And all that time that you have on the weekend that you're giving to these people and advertising revenue by your spectatorship of whatever the fucking shit is that they're doing, you're building a legacy of wealth behind you. So if you do lay down your head prematurely, you have something to leave your children. You have a roadmap for them to follow. Listen, daddy, mommy, whatever it is, I walk this path. I should be an encouragement to you. Do what I did. Learn how I uh, developed and do these types of things. That's how you leave a real legacy. Not going on social media, flaunting, saying you're rich and look where I live and look what I drive and act a fool. So I have a weekend ahead of me, folks. So do you. And I want to do things with my family and make more memories. So I hope that I hit the mark on what it was I was aiming for today with some of you. If not all of you, it's, it's fine. If I got one person here in the audience that took something from this and was helpful to them, inspiring and encouraging on how to handle adversities, you know, let me know in the comment section of the post for this Twitter space. Enjoy your weekend. And so I'll talk to you next time. Be safe.